Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is Andrew from Schnauzer Face Minis. I get a lot of questions about editing and motion graphic software, and since I teach these programs and have certifications in some of them, I thought it might be fun to do a few basic tutorials. I think Final Cut, Premiere, After Effects, and Sound Booth are the most useful to YouTube content producers, but let me know if you've got any requests for other programs. I'm starting with Adobe After Effects, which is the motion graphic software in the Adobe Creative Suite. This is the first tutorial in a series of at least four or five, and I'm starting with the absolute basics. Just know that this will probably be old news for longtime users. So what is After Effects? First, let's define After Effects by what it isn't. It's not an editing software. Yes, we can do some editing in After Effects, but Premiere and Final Cut are our editing workhorses. It's not a 3D modeling software. We can work in 3D space, but Maya, Lightwave, and 3ds Max are the true 3D modeling programs. It's not a 2D animation program. Again, you can do the basics, but Flash is much better suited for animation. It's also not an image editing software. That's why we have Photoshop. So what is After Effects? It's a motion graphic software for adding or creating visual flair and integrating dynamic animation to our video projects. We can use After Effects to create animated titles, logos for our intros, throw in some visual flair to spice up the video, and even tweak problematic footage. So let's just jump right in. The After Effects interface will look a little intimidating for first time users. It's kind of like a mesh of Photoshop, Premiere, and Sound Booth, which makes sense because those are all made by Adobe as well. But it doesn't necessarily work the same. Let's look at what each section of the interface does. In the upper left, we have the project panel and the effects control panel. The project panel is like a file folder to hold our project's media, that is, our video files, image files, and that kind of thing. The Effect Controls panel allows us to manipulate effects and filters. We're going to spend a lot of time in the Effect Controls panel, so go ahead and make friends with it now. The Composition panel is where we see the project. It's like the stage in Adobe Flash, or the canvas in Final Cut. Any changes we make to our project are going to show up here. On the right side of the screen, we have the Info panel, which shares space with the Audio panel. We're not going to mess with these much today, but the info panel is a coordinate finder for your project, and the audio panel allows for the most basic of audio manipulation. In all the years I've used After Effects, I have never once used After Effects to edit audio. That's why we have Sound Booth or Apple Soundtrack. Below is the Effects and Presets panel, which are kind of like the filters in Photoshop. Some of these, like curves and tint and key light and fractal noise, we'll use all the time. Others, like CC Mr. Smoothie, are fun, but not terribly professional or useful. On the bottom, we have the Timeline panel, which is a graphical representation of our project. It's like a mix between Photoshop's layers and Premiere's editing interface. This is a really important panel, and we'll be working here all the time. Again, this is an incredibly brief overview, and we're going to get more in-depth as we go. So let's just start a project. First, I want to bring files from my hard drive into After Effects. This is called importing. And there are tons of ways to import files. You can go to File, Import, or right click on the project panel and select Import Files. You can use the shortcut key Command I on a Mac or Control I on a PC. Or you can drag and drop files from your hard drive onto the project panel itself. My personal favorite method is just to find an empty space in the project panel and double click. I'm going to import a copy of my Schnauzer Face Mini's logo, and you see it shows up here in the project panel. Now we have a file in After Effects, but we still haven't started a project. Again, there are multiple ways to do this, but the easiest way is to click on the Create a New Composition button. It's the one that looks like a film strip with some shapes on it. At this point, you'll need to know a few basics about your video project, such as your frame rate and resolution. I know I always shoot at 24 frames per second and 1920 by 1080, but check your camera to verify your shooting settings. At the bottom, I'll set a length, let's say 10 seconds. If this looks unfamiliar to you, this is how duration is represented in time code, hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. I'll name it Schnauz and click OK. Now we've got a 10 second project started, but there's nothing in it. So I'm going to drag the logo into the project so we can animate it. To do this, we can drop it into the timeline, or we can drop it into the composition panel. If we drop it into the timeline, we can specify where, in terms of time, we want the file to go. We can also adjust its position in the layer stack if we have other files in our project, which we don't right now. If we drop it into the composition panel, 
we can specify the position where we want it to go. And by default, it will start at the beginning of the composition and at the top of the layer stack. Let's look at the very basic properties we can adjust on every piece of media we bring into After Effects. Hitting this disclosure triangle next to the layer, and then again next to transform, will expand out five properties, anchor point, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. We'll work with anchor point and opacity later, but let's just focus on the middle three today. Position obviously refers to our media's position in the composition. We've got two coordinates, the x-axis, or horizontal position, and the y-axis, or vertical position. We can set this media to work in 3D space, which would allow us to adjust depth, but we won't worry about that just yet. I can change these values and any values in the yellowy-orange color in two ways. Either click and enter a new value, or click and drag left or right to decrease the value or increase the value respectively. Scale refers to the size of our media. Scaling up and down works the same as changing the position values. Avoid increasing your media past 100% to keep images from pixelating. If we click this chain length, we're no longer locked into the original aspect ratio. This means we can change width and height independently. Finally, the rotation allows us to, well, rotate. Dragging the number to the right will give you a positive number from 0 to 359, which is a clockwise rotation. We can also drag to the left for a negative number or a counterclockwise rotation. The first number refers to total revolutions. If we type in 2, for example, we'll have rotated the image two full clockwise revolutions. The inverse is true if we enter negative 2. We'll get two full counterclockwise revolutions. Now this is only useful when we're animating. Doing a full 360 degree rotation without movement shows no change. So I think it's definitely time to start animating this bad boy. Yeah, I said bad boy. First, I want to animate the scale or the size of the logo. I want it to grow over the course of two seconds. Notice that dragging the scale back and forth changes the size of the image, but I'm not animating anything yet. I'm just scaling it up or down. To animate, I need to alert After Effects that I'm in animation mode, and that's what this stopwatch is for. Think of animation as a three-step process. First, click the stopwatch to set your first keyframe. A keyframe is a container of information. It tells After Effects what the value of your asset is. In this case, the scale is 50%. And at what time? In this case, at the very first frame. The keyframe is represented by a diamond. It's gray when it's not selected, and yellow when it is. The next step in the animation process is to move forward or backward in time. I'll drag the current time indicator forward two seconds. Finally, I'll change the value of the scale, let's say to 100%. Notice that when I change the value, After Effects automatically sets a new keyframe. When you hit the stopwatch at the beginning of this process, you told After Effects that you're in animation mode, so any future modifications will automatically generate a new keyframe. If we scrub the current time indicator, we see After Effects has filled in all the blanks between our first keyframe and our last keyframe. One caveat. We hit the stopwatch to begin the animation process, and that creates a keyframe. It may be easy to think that we set another keyframe by hitting the stopwatch again. That's just not the case. In fact, hitting the stopwatch a second time will reset the work you've already done. Just hit the stopwatch once, then move forward or backward in time, change the value of whatever asset you're working with, and a new keyframe will automatically appear. And here's the good news. Once we learn how to animate one thing, it's the same process for absolutely everything else. So let's practice a few more basic animations before we wrap up this introduction. I want the logo to start off screen at half size, float and spin to the middle while growing to full size, then float, spin, and shrink off screen. It'll look something like this. Pretty stupid, yeah, but we're still learning. I'll zoom out so you can see the composition a little better. You can zoom out with the center wheel on your mouse. If your mouse doesn't have a center wheel, you can use the magnification selection setting here. I'm going to adjust the position in a new way. Before, we adjust a position by entering numbers in the timeline panel. But you can also select and move your media wherever you want it inside the composition panel. I want the logo to start at 50%, and for now I'll leave position and rotation alone. I'll hit the stopwatch next to position, scale, and rotation, 
and this gives me three keyframes. Remember, this just means After Effects is keeping track of the value of these assets at this point in time. So the After Effects knows that we're at 50%, no rotation, and this particular position. Now I'll move forward one second. I'll click and drag the logo to about the center and drop it in place. Notice that After Effects automatically generated a new keyframe. Now I'll manually enter 100% for scale and give it one complete clockwise rotation. Again, two new keyframes. Now I'll move forward another second in time and do the opposite. Drag the logo to the opposite corner, decrease the scale to 50%, and change the rotation back to zero revolutions. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, this sucks, but we're going to get better. The animation happens too quickly, and I want everything to happen over a longer duration. If we click and drag in the timeline panel, we can draw a marquee around all the keyframes we want. When they're yellow, they're selected. Now we can click and drag them forward or backward. Dragging them forward in time obviously slows down the animation, because we're asking After Effects to perform the same animation over a longer period of time. And of course, dragging the keyframes back in time will speed up the animation, because we're asking After Effects to perform the same animation in a shorter period of time. And now for the curveball and the final tidbit for this tutorial. If we want our logo to start off screen, then spin into the center, and hold for two seconds before spinning off screen, how do we do that? Remember, we've only learned how to set keyframes by changing values. So how do we set a keyframe if we want values to hold in place? I'll delete my keyframes and start over. Again, starting off screen, then spinning and growing into place. Now I want that beautiful schnauz to hold for two seconds before it disappears. Let's think this through. This is a four-step process. One, I want the logo to start in the corner. Two, I want it to move to the middle. Three, I want it to hold in place. And then four, I want it to move to the opposite corner. Now since this is a four-step process, we need four keyframes. The first two are obvious. After Effects generates a keyframe at the beginning when we hit the stopwatch. Then we move forward in time, change the value, and it sets another keyframe. Now we're moving forward and keeping it the same. But we still need a new keyframe to tell After Effects what we want it to do in step three of this animation. So to do that, we click on this keyframe generator, which is the gray diamond to the left of our media. This just generates a keyframe for whatever the settings are at that point. And since we haven't changed anything, this keyframe data is the same as the previous keyframe data. So now the animation begins, then moves to the middle, and now holds in the middle before we enter our next set of keyframes. Now let's go forward another second, move our logo off screen, and we're done. Now you may be thinking, what a buzzkill. I watched this whole video and all I learned was how to make my logo look like it's breakdancing. Well, this is a really tough program, probably the toughest one I've ever used, and it's really important to spend the time laying the foundations. And like I said, every time we animate something, it's the exact same process we just learned. So if we're comfortable with the After Effects interface and we're comfortable with keyframing, we're well on our way to making some awesome motion graphics. So in our next tutorial, we'll make a cool little futuristic looking solar system, work with a few effects and presets, and even throw in some text animation. Anyway, I hope this is useful to you guys. Again, I'll probably do about five of these for each of the main software programs, and then I can go more into depth with whichever one you guys like. Just let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.